War of the Windsors. And for once, I'm not talking about Harry and Meghan. Instead, this is the new battle between Prince Charles and his younger brother, Prince Edward. The Daily Mail's editor-at-large, Richard Kay, covered this story, and he spoke to us about that. All we know is it is the wish of the Queen and was the wish of Prince Philip uh, that Edward should, in due course, inherit the title. I mean, the nuts and bolts of this are, are quite simple. On Philip's death, all his titles passed to his oldest son, Prince Charles. Charles already has a Scottish title. He's the Duke of Rothsay. He uses that title whenever he's north of the border. It appears that he's been speculating or he's been talking to people about using the Edinburgh title. But he was assured that the Rothsay title was senior to the Edinburgh title. Where, what does all this mean and where does it lie? I'm not entirely sure, but I suspect it's to do with uh, Charles wanting to keep a handle on royal titles, who they go to. It's also to do with his vi vision and framework for the future of a slimmed down monarchy with fewer uh, working parts to it and having a new Duke of Edinburgh who has a son himself, Edward has a son who would in due course inherit the title one day, maybe Charles thinks that's spreading it a bit too thin. We don't entirely know. They're not particularly close. There's obviously a big age gap between them, 16 years. Um, but, but they are brothers, and, and, uh, but there is a degree of sibling rivalry within the royal family, perhaps more pronounced than in, in any other family, quite frankly. Um, and over the years, Charles has been unhappy about certain things that the Wessexes have done. I have to say, since all that business with Sophie and the fake shake all those years ago, she and Edward have pretty much knuckled down and got on with sort of low-grade royal work. My feeling is that um, if the Queen were to have a word in her son's ear, then Charles would fall into line and Edward will get the title. I mean, you'd have thought this would be something that wouldn't really matter. You'd have thought he got enough on his plate. I mean, he's doing so much of uh, the monarchical duties now. He does a lot of his mother. He's sort of running that he's the head of the family effectively now. All the problems with Harry, unresolved. Prince Andrew, uncertainty over his scandal. What's going to happen there? He's got enough on his plate. I mean, you'd have thought this would be something that wouldn't really matter. But these things do matter to the royals. They take these titles and honorifics incredibly seriously. And a lot of thought goes into them and where they fit into the scheme of things. Well, it's all rather extraordinary, isn't it? Let's hear from the panel now. Richard, you expect to see stories about children not fulfilling their late parents' wishes in the news, in the papers, but you don't really expect it from the royal family, do you? There's something really human about this story that I think we can all relate to. You know, it's like if your fathers um, pledge something to you sort of all your life and, and then he dies and then you hear actually one of your brothers or sisters is going to prevent you um, receiving what you're expecting well, to get all from I'm your getting, father. All I'm in line for is a Holden, an old Holden and they can have it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. I think it's... So you can understand Edward's frustration. He's spoken about this publicly, about how he expects this. But then I sympathise with um, Prince Charles because he has had this plan for many years to slim down the monarchy. And I think part of that is he doesn't want to sort of be almost creating new titles. So if Edward gets this title of Duke of Edinburgh, it would then be handed on to his son and his son beyond that. And I think he's trying to cut down those titles. Mm. But it's all, um, it's quite sort of complicated and it, and it is, um, it does seem strange times. And it makes me wonder if we've spoken on this program in recent um, weeks about how Edward and Sophie have taken a quite a prominent role after Philip's death. They've given lots of interviews and almost become sort of spokesmen mm. for the royal family. And it does make you wonder if Prince Charles hasn't been very happy about that. Well, mm. quite. Do you have any sympathy for Charles's position? I do a bit, because he can't really keep an eye on his own children, by which I mean Harry. I imagine, <laughs> you know, as, as Richard says, the, uh, Viscount Seven, uh, Edward's son, you know, he will one day be slightly more famous if his father has this big title. And what happens if he grows up to be a sort of tearaway? Um, you know, it, there's a lot more branches of the family to keep an eye on if Edward gets this big title, I'd say. So I can sort of sympathise with why he wants to slim down, starting with this. Do you think there's anything to what Richard was saying in his piece about, you know, you mentioned this PR campaign of Sophie and Edward. Do you think that there, there was a, a deliberate thing to demonstrate to Charles and to the public that actually we are relevant, we are important, we are worthy of 
Edward having this title? I think so. Well, remember immediately after Philip's death, when we were at the church, we saw Prince Andrew. He was stepping forward and giving interviews. And I think someone must have had a word because he then disappeared and didn't give any more interviews. Yeah. But we've had a series of them in um, newspaper magazines, which is very unusual. There was yeah. on, on the radio. And they, they did seem to sort of seized that opportunity or and did it very well you know I've said before I think Sophie's a great speaker and they're both great representatives of, of the royal family so I mean personally I, I think it would be very sad if they don't have a, a prominent role in the, in the future it would you, be a great loss. But do either of you think that Charles is that petty to be upset about that that PR campaign? I don't know if it is petty it's quite a big deal for right. Edward to become the next Duke of Edinburgh um, what I am surprised by is I didn't know that he uh, didn't have a good relationship with Edward, actually. This is the first time I've really understood quite how is, bad is it is. Is that true? Well, it must be, because um, surely if he was very close with his brother, he wouldn't want to do this to him. So if it wasn't think? true before, I don't, I don't yeah, think yeah, it will be not. very soon. You know. But the other thing I don't understand is what does it say about um, going against a, a, a dead man's wishes? Well, I think it was, it's very awkward because it was publicly announced at the time of their wedding that he would eventually become the Duke of Edinburgh mm. and then the son would become the Earl of Wessex. That, that was accepted. And then that, that's been repeated in interviews recently. So obviously it wouldn't have happened if Prince Philip was still with us. Mm. Um, but that's the brutal nature of monarchy that um, Charles will be king and what he wants goes, you yeah. know. So... Mm it's he's the one with the power and he's making that clear as Richard Kay sort of said in his piece it's a bit of a mafia type thing where it's business and not pleasure you know? yeah, Philip, 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 wanted family. To, yeah. Philip wanted to um, bring down the size of the monarchy as well so it's in one way you could say it sort of is within his wishes mm. maybe that's how Charles is justifying it to himself and what do you think is the conversation then in the Wessex household at the moment oh how do you think Edward is dealing with this they latest. must be fuming this was his time shine i mean even me and i talk about these things a lot i'm not always sure which one edward is let alone the rest of the nation Oof. of course i know which one edward is but this was his moment to become a big name with a big title within the royal family um and it was tantalizingly close for him and now he's lost it he must be fu fuming and from what i've heard charles hasn't spoken to edward directly about it oh really you know even about a week or so ago edward gave an interview where he said we'll have to see what happens when prince charles becomes king oh my gosh that's embarrassing you know, so just stick it in the daily mail and let him read it there so it's being sort of yeah. leaked out and yeah. um I think partly there's a lot of flies. We've heard things about what Charles is going to do. He's going to give more public access to the palaces and things like that. I think a lot of the time he wants to sort of get ideas out there and see how they and float, them, float yeah. with the public. Yeah. What a bad time to do it because the, the monarchy needs to look like it's more harmonious than it, than it really is well, at all times. I mean, the obvious question side. is do you think he's floated it with the Queen? Oh, good question. Um, well, certainly we can guarantee that nothing will happen while the Queen's still with us. Yeah. So it's, she, we don't know, maybe we will find out if the Queen makes clear what her wishes are. She mm. really likes Sophie famously, doesn't she? She's a really Apparently big fan so, of Sophie's. Yeah. Yeah. Although Sophie may have been spinning that line out herself, we now learn. So, um, so oh, who you're knows? you're so <laughs> cynical. Oh, <laughs> oh my cynical. goodness. <laughs> wow. That's all we have for you on our YouTube show. But to see the rest of this episode, including some more fascinating royal revelations, head to www.mailplus.co.uk forward slash royals or click the link on screen now.